welcome to another GCSE revision video and in this video we're going to be looking at compound interest. Okay so compound interest is where the interest is not paid back when it's due. So for example I borrow £1,000 over five years with interest charged at 2% per annum but I don't pay anything back. How much do I owe at the end of five years? Well, we start off with a £1,000 loan, and then of the end of year one, I've got to pay 2% of that £1,000, which is £20. So at the end of year one, I owe £1,020. However, at the start of year two, my debt is now £1,020, not £1,000. So I'm paying interest on that £20. So I'm now paying... 2% of £1,020 instead of 2% of £1,000. So now the interest is £20.40p. So now my debt is £1,040.40p. So at the start of year three, instead of having 2% of £1,000, I've got 2% of £1,040.40p. So that means I now owe £1,061.21. At the end of year four, I now owe £1,061.21 plus 2% of £1,061.21, which is £1,082.43. And at the end of year five, I'm going to, instead of owing £1,100 like I would with a simple interest, I actually owe um, £104.08p on top of the £1,000 loan, which is £1,104.08p. So the difference between simple interest and compound interest is that with simple interest, the interest is paid off as it becomes due, so the actual amount owed doesn't change. So the interest is always calculated on the same amount. But with compound interest, you're paying interest on interest on interest on interest. So the interest is compounding all the time, which is why it's called compound interest. OK, so when it comes to calculating compound interest, all we have to do is remember that we're charging interest on the interest and so on. So in year one... We've borrowed £1,000, so we're paying £1,000 plus the interest on £1,000, which is £1,000 plus, in this case, 2% or 0.02 times £1,000, or 2% of £1,000. So at the end of year one, what we owe is £1,000 plus £1,000 times 0.02. Now we can factor out that £1,000 because the two sides of the plus have that £1,000 in common. You can think of £1,000 as £1,000 times 1 and then £1,000 times 0 0.02 is £1,000 times 0 0.02. So when we factor out the £1,000, what we've got is £1,000 into 1 plus 0 0.02. Now at the end of year 2, what we've got is the balance from year one plus the interest on the balance from year one. So this time, instead of factoring out £1,000, we're factoring out the balance from year one. So what we're left with is £1,000 into 1 plus 0 0.02 into, again, 1 plus 0 0.02 for the same reasons as we did in year one. Now we know that anything times itself is that thing squared. Since we've got our 1 plus 0 0.02 times 1 plus 0 0.02, that can be rewritten as 1 plus 0 0.02 squared, or 0, 1 plus 0 0.02 raised to the power of 2. So at the end of year three, this time we're add, adding 0 0.02 times the balance from year two onto what was at the end of year two. And again, this time instead of factoring out £1,000 or factoring out 1000 into 1 plus 0 0.02, we're factoring out 
everything from the balance of year two. So we're factoring out £1,000 into 1 plus 0 0.02 squared. And when we factor that out, we end up with 1 plus 0 0.02 again. So when we're multiplying 1 plus 0 0.02 squared by 1 plus 0 0.02, what we've got is 1 plus 0 0.02 cubed. So you can see how the pattern's going. By year five, what we owe is £1,000 into 1 plus 0 0.02 raised to the power of five, or £1,000 plus 1 plus 2% raised to the power of five. And that comes to £1,104.08p. And I strongly advise you to grab your calculator and check that out on your scientific calculator. Make sure you agree that that figure is correct. Then rewind the video and look at the amount we got when we added it up year by year and see that the two numbers are the same. So if we generalise that principle we bring us to the compound interest formula. So the balance owed is equal to the principal, that is to say the amount invested or borrowed, into 1 plus the rate raised to the power of how many times that rate is applied. So if your interest is calculated annually, then your T would represent your time in years. If the interest is calculated monthly, then T represents your time in months. If T is rep, uh, calculated daily, then it represents the number of days that the loan's over. So our balance is the principal into 1 plus the rate raised to the power of the number of times it's calculated. Okay, so let's work an example. Sean gets 5% interest on his savings and doesn't take any money out. If he started with £500, how much does he have after five years? Well, we remember that the balance is equal to the principal into 1 plus the rate raised to the power t. Now, in this case, the principal is £500. The rate is 5% or 5 over 100 or 0 0.05 and t, because it's, we're assuming it's calculated annually, is going to be the 5 years, so that's 5. And if we whip our calculator out, that's going to come to £638.14p. I do recommend you get your calculator out and practice typing equations like that into your calculator because you will need them on the exam. OK, let's have one more to finish off with. You are in charge of finding a venue for your club. Your club is very popular and it's growing at a rate of 10% every month. Your current venue is at maximum capacity and holds 60 people. If you choose a venue that is too big, your club is wasting money on capacity it doesn't need. If you choose a venue that is too small, your members will get fed up of constantly changing venue and stop coming. Members will tolerate moving venue once a year. You want to know how big your club will be after one year so you know the smallest sized venue that will hold your club for a whole year. OK, why don't you pause the video and take a little while to think about that one. And when you're ready, press play and I'll give you the answer. OK, you might actually be thinking at this point, hang on, has he gone completely cuckoo? What is a population growth question doing on a video about compound interest? Well, actually, population growth and population decline questions are actually compound interest questions in disguise. In this case, we've got a club that's got 60 members. So we can say our principal is actually equal to 60. This is the same as saying you invest 60 pounds. And then we've got our rate. This is like saying our interest rate. The rate of growth of the club is 10%. So that's like saying you're earning 10% interest. And the time 
In this case, we've got one year and the club's growing at a rate of 10% per month. So that's 12 months. So our time period, our T, the number of times that the interest is calculated, is equal to 12. So if you, we use our balance, in this case our balance would be the size of the club, is equal to our principal, which in this case is 60, into 1 plus our rate, which is 10%, so that's 0 0.1, raised to the power of the number of times it's calculated, which is 12. So that's equal to... Sixty times one plus point one raised to the power of twelve, which is one hundred eighty-eight point three zero five seven whatever. Well, you can't have point three of a person, so we're saying that there will be one hundred eighty-eight people at the end of the year. So that's very much like saying your balance at the end if you um, have £60 to start off with and you get in a rate of return of 10% per month over 12 months is £188. In this case we're talking people, we've got 60 people in a club and that number of people is growing at a rate of 10% a month over 12 months. So we've got 188 people at the end of the month. This would also work in at, if we were going backwards, if we were doing a declining. So let's try another example. Let's say we have the uh, radioactive decay of an element. And let's say the element has, um, I don't know, let's say 1,000 atoms that decay or rather the half-life yeah let's say half-life the half-life is equal to, let's say, one day. So how many atoms left? After a week. OK, well, in this case, our principal is equal to 1,000. Our rate, because it's a half-life, our rate is not 50%, but minus 50%, or negative 50%, because it's decaying, it's, it, the number's going down. And our number of times is equal to 7 days, because it's 50% it's reduction every day, for one week, which is seven days. So the number of atoms we've got left, or our balance, is equal to 1,000 times. This is 1 plus negative 50%. In this case, this is 1 minus 50%, or 1 minus 0.5 raised to the power 7, which is equal to 7825 so we've got we can't have a fraction of an atom so we've got somewhere between seven and eight atoms um, I could round up to say eight atoms but over that week's period 
one of those atoms has actually gone. So we've actually got seven atoms left. That 0.8 is telling us that the last atom decayed just before that week came up. So we've got seven atoms left. Okay, I hope now you can see that things like population growth and population decay questions on an exam is the same as compound interest questions. So if you get questions like the number of bacteria in a petri dish grows at a rate of 25% per day or whatever, or the number of um, people that die of a disease in a population, whatever, those questions are just compound interest questions in disguise. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Why don't you have a go at trying out some questions for yourself? And good luck with your revision, and good luck with your exams, and I'll see you in a future video.